When Ralph Hymans was granted a one-hour sitting with Prince Philip, palace staff warned him the Duke could be unpredictable, impatient and might even walk out. He arrived at their meeting early and unannounced. As I was setting up the equipment with, with my two crewmates, suddenly there was a booming voice behind us, which one of you is the artist? And we all turned around and he was standing there in full military garb with his medals and everything. And it was quite, we all broke out in laughter. So it was a fantastic icebreaker. I think he just likes sort of surprising. It was 2017, the Australian artist had an upcoming exhibition in Denmark, a painting of the man born Prince of Greece and Denmark, a fitting addition. Knowing it could be Philip's final portrait, Ralph chose the location carefully, the Grand Corridor at Windsor Castle, private, magnificent and full of history. Importantly lined with busts and paintings that are very representative uh, of ancestors of the royal family. And specifically for Philip, his, uh, at the end of that corridor in a room called the Tapestry Room, his mother and grandmother were actually born. So for him, it's like where the story began, even before he met Queen Elizabeth. So um, it's, it was a beautiful spot to place it. And now, sadly, that he has passed away at Windsor Castle, it really does complete the life cycle. And that place has you know, extraordinary significance. Philip too had a passion for painting, creating his own art here from the deck of the Royal Yacht Britannia. This was his most famous piece, an informal portrait of his wife the Queen in 1965, reading a newspaper over breakfast at Windsor Castle. During his sitting with Ralph, the Duke was inquisitive, charismatic and interested in technique. A sparkle in his eye, you know, a little bit of mischief a little bit of nostalgia. He likes to make people laugh. He, he, lo he looks for the funny things in every situation, but that belies a kind of serious intent. I think he could see the seriousness of the portrait being potentially his last. A masterpiece that took 10 months to complete with Philip approving the final product. He almost let out a bit of a sort of gasp <laughs> when he first saw it which took me by surprise because I'm not sure, I wasn't sure how to interpret that. But I think he was quite surprised. It can be quite confronting to see an image in life-size scale of yourself like that. And he went up close and had a good close look at it and kept stepping back quite like an artist does. On the same day that it was unveiled, the Queen and Prince Philip decided the painting should belong in the Royal Collection. It now hangs here in St James's Palace, where in non-pandemic times, the Duke of Edinburgh Awards are presented. Created in the year Philip retired from public duties, the portrait was conceived as a goodbye. That was the original conception of the painting, that he would be looking at a last glance back at the viewer in his very sort of direct gaze. A look that struck a chord with people around the world ahead of his final farewell. He represents more than, you know, than his position. I think he represents a piece of history, you know, and when I painted him, I felt like I was painting history itself. And he's been a part of all of our collective consciousness for all of our lives. I mean, he's been a constant and there are very few people in, in you know, that we can ever call a constant in our lives. So I think people will really miss him and what he represents. I think he represents endurance and duty. Mm -hmm. Some of those values that sometimes we, we forget are so valuable.